Now I'm going to spend a little time covering two issues we should be aware of as we're working through our mix. They're to do with phase and timing. When you're dealing with multiple microphones on instruments such as drums, guitar, and bass, there's an opportunity for phase shift to occur. There might be a situation where one of the mics is phase inverted or electrically inverted due to miswired cables. And you could also have what we call phase shift. This can happen when sound reaches multiple microphones on the same instrument at different times. Phase shift and inversion problems usually show up as a cancellation of low frequencies, leaving the sound lacking the punch and character it originally had. So I'm going to use our kick drum track as an example of this because it's typical to see two to three microphones on the same drum in different positions. Now the song that we're using for our mix only has one kick drum track available. So I'm going to go on to one of the artist's other songs that uses two mics in this situation so we can use this for our example. Typically you'd find a phase switch on the channel of an analog console, but because of the architecture of Pro Tools, they had to implement it into a plugin. So the plugin that we're going to use is called Trim, and we're going to insert it on one of the kick drum channels. And the advantage of this is that it has a phase switch, so we're able to A-B the differences of the two summed tracks. So I'm going to run the track now, and I'm going to be switching the phase switch in and out, so you get an idea what phase cancellation sounds like. So did you notice how the low end or the punch disappeared as we put the track out of phase? And you can also test this visually by zooming in on the kick tracks and making sure that the waveforms follow each other in a uniform pattern. As you can see here, our two kick drum tracks follow in the same positive and negative direction, so they're in phase. And there's an easy way to change this if we need to. We just select the complete region of one of the tracks, and up under Audio Suite, we choose Invert. Select Process, and as you can see, the whole track is flipped around in phase. So we'll just put it back to where it should be. Now, as you know, we have two microphones on this kick drum, one being inside the drum, tight to the beater, and the other one being just outside the front skin. What can happen there is, you can get a slight timing issue, because sound reaches one microphone before it reaches the other. And you can see it here visually that the one in green is just slightly ahead of the one in blue. So what I'm going to do is take the bottom track and just shift it ahead slightly so that the two of them line up. To show you the change in sound as the bottom one is shifted, I'm going to run the track and move it back and forth and you can hear the difference that it creates of the sound of our bass drum. So as you can see, it just tightened up the bass drum a little bit. Now there's other areas that phase can give us trouble as well, and that's uh, in relationship to other microphones that are on the kit, such as overhead mics, or even a snare. So as I was checking earlier, I did notice there was a difference on my overhead mics, and I want to share this with you now. I'm going to unmute the snare kick and overhead channels, and apply the trim plugin on the overheads. So what I noticed in this exercise is when I flipped the phase of the overheads, the snare came a lot more forward and sounded a lot fuller. Now it's time to have a listen to the track and you'll be able to hear what I mean. So what's happening there, when I flip the phase of the overheads and we combine the overhead mics with the snare mic, we tend to enhance or build up the sound rather than subtract some of the sound away. 
So I've come to the conclusion that these microphones are now a little bit more in phase than they were previously. So I'll be using the Invert Audio Suite plugin to reverse the phase of this track permanently. Now you can go along and test other drum tracks in your setup just to see how they affect the sound as well. You might even find that reversing the phase of the hi-hat channel might reduce some of the snare leakage. Just be sure that you don't affect the sound of the hi-hat at the same time. Room microphones aren't usually a problem as they are spaced far away into the room and don't have the same characteristics as a close mic instrument. Tom tracks for me aren't a problem as I tend to duck the leakage a little bit and only bring the tom level up when they're played. But another place to check, if the toms are mic top and bottom, check that bottom mic to make sure that they put it out of phase when it was recorded. And you can do this one simply by just looking at the waveforms. And last but not least, this situation can happen on other instruments such as your bass or your guitars that are multiple mic'd. Experiment by switching some of those channels out of phase, you might even get an interesting sound you weren't expecting. <laughs> 